Good evening, everybody. So, I'm making another video. I guess I should try and make one per week. Uh, this one, I've got a small dilemma. Uh, as you can see here, I try to do um, some stuff for my uh, Northern, Northern Blue Knights for my Heavy Gear Arena. And I wanted to do something like this here on the shoulder. And uh, I have box which is not in the video which is here which is the smallest shoulder pad uh, size approximate but I was trying out these and there's this paint in here which you probably can't really see too well and it did not go quite so well with it being so small so I was thinking something like this but to me this just does not look right to be to be something I want to throw on there so I thought of a King Arthur type uh, deal. Let's make in something that looks like a sword in the stone. And this is just a wrist sketch. And we we'll won't focus until I hiccup and move it back a little bit. Nice. Well, I wasn't too thrilled with any of the above. Come on, stupid cord. So I wasn't happy with any of these, to, to say the least. And I went online, and I went to Forge World, and I went to um, what was that one place? I went to uh, No Hassle Miniatures, and I, I put in Google search, and I couldn't find. One is what I wanted, and that was decals. I was hoping to find some some decals, maybe some, you know a place that makes a bunch of generic de decals. Man, I really wish I bought great fabric, uh, but that's besides the point. And so I'm going to show you what I, I have got on these miniatures now. And let's open up my settings. And let's go into the zoom. And tilt the camera up a little. Have a little bit more light. It's actually. Come a little bit here and drag this up and over. So this is the progression so far on the miniature, as you can as you can see. Um, I did orange for the lens, which you might have been able to see, and this was with the exile blue to shadow gray built up the same way that I had described in my resolution video. Uh, underneath the base coat I did do a bad at black and I can never remember the name. I always want to say Leviathan Blue but I think that's purple. Uh, Azure Blue I think is the wash from GW and I just mixed those up a little bit to get a really dark blue color almost black and then I gave this a wash uh, I really thought the, the wash would help really darken in these spots, especially for such a, a small, highly small detail as these arenas are. Now I gotta do some highlighting on the wheels in the back, because they're just right now straight black. But for the most part, these miniatures are done. I'll try to get them better shot. I had a real bitch of time getting these lenses done. They're uh, they're quite small. And come on, manually focus. I guess it's a buzz. Come on. That's about as good as it's gonna get, sorry. But um Oh, what the hell are you doing, silly camera? But uh, the, the, 
Here's the lenses on the smaller guy. They're they're really super small uh, lenses, so I had a real bear of a time getting in there and, and trying to make it look kind of like a glowy orangish thing. And there's three lenses all together. And hopefully, I did a good enough job. But before I run off on these shoulders, come. On. What in the world is up with my camera not wanting to focus? I guess I may have it too close. Back this up a little bit. Come on, camera. I think I broke it. There we go. But on the shoulder pad here, I was. this is where I was looking to put the um, lettering. So I'm trying to find I think I lost sidetrack on, on trying to show off these miniatures. I'm sorry everybody. But right here on the shoulder I want to put a decal of some type. Doesn't have to be the MBK that I was hoping for. You know something night looking. Um, maybe something not quite so mainstream. Like you know not a, not a Grey Knights insignia. Here's the big boy. I still gotta do his treads. Uh, they both have backpacks that I forgot about, and I need to paint those. So the backpacks definitely still need to be done. And I was looking at putting the icon or decal here on his shoulder, and this lens might be it was, it was still kind of difficult, but it might be easier for you to see on here. And then uh, I did chainmail. Let's show this one. I did chainmail for the silver parts. And then I took Vallejo ink smoke. And I put a little bit of smoke over it to kind of give it a dirty silverish look. Like, you know, some dirt or mud has befallen the parts of the tread. So that, that's what I did for that. So if you know where I can get some decals or a website that has like, you know, a, a ton of decals or something I can use as a decal, even if it's something I could just lay over the top and then, you know, kind of just hold it in place and then take the paintbrush and then paint over it and then the paint will go, you know, like a like one of those stencil, like a stencil. That's a, it's like some, ugh, that is exactly what I mean. So if you know a place where that has really good stencils that will fit this size of a miniature shoulder, please let me know uh, in uh, the comment boxes. I, I'd be really appreciative of it. And also let me know what you think of their work so far. Uh, the armor is, is done. It's got final highlight on it. Um, it's all shadowed as far as it's going to get shadowed. So on and so forth. I just the the black treads and the black wheels on the other one actually I need to put black in right here I guess I could actually probably leave it like that but for the most part yeah these these guys are 100% are done other than the backpack it needs to be done and glued on place on both and then I gotta start on working on the south but I really want to put a decal or some type of art here on the shoulder to 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 make it look good. I think I think I think putting something here is gonna really look good. And like I said, I measured out on the smaller one on, on that thing and I've tried multiple times on construction paper to do something with painting and I just can't I can't get the look I want on this size freehand uh, even with my most fine detailed brush. Um, also a reminder, my contest, if you're, if you're, if you're taking part in my contest, let me zoom out a little bit more. Let's see, up, and over. Trying out some brass here. Um, 
I just put a little drop in and start putting on there so that's not it's not complete crunch some chain mail here just to get them started and do his whole whip in his metal I think it makes more sense that a giant robot be holding metal instead of wood so start with silver now I'm gonna make my minos jacks mostly silver um, we should put a little bit here on the back on the uh, I guess they're a broiler since they're steampunk type stuff and um, so yeah I'm going to paint my men off up to be more in line with the Knight Templars, other than obviously the big difference is going to be the symbol of Menoth is much different than the Christianity symbol. And I'm going to do the robots with black plates, with the white, or yeah, with white insignia, because you know um, all all their all their Warjacks are blessed before battle um, by the priests. So the black is because you know they're, they're you know they're blessed. You know there's a little bit more pride in them than an average day soldier. And then the white is for the purity uh, of you know the blessing. So that's the way I'm gonna go with them. And like I said, um. Basing it all off of um, off the Knights Templar, and let's see, I'll show you what I'm talking about here. I guess I need to zoom out, switch back over, which didn't help any because now I'm not sure if I'm. Uh, Aha, here we go. So if we look at this flag here, you see that there's black, white, and red, which are the main colors. This here is the um, flag that would have been flown by a Knights Templar group. And then over here has a brief description of, of you know the color. And then it says, you know, um, Knights wore white surcoat surcoat with red cross and white mantle. I'm not sure what a mantle would have been on a night so if anybody knows please um, especially with a picture uh, if you if you can um, please describe what that is and the sergeants wore black tunics with red crosses on the front and uh, black and white or brown mantles with white as well assigned to the Templars okay so that being said Here's uh, some computer uh, images that I found online. This one, obviously, um, in black with the white. Uh, this is a black with the silver, but it's white on the shield. I'm making sure you can see it. Just give me a second. And then here you have a red uh, cloth with the white. And then back there is more of a, like a burlap sack type look with a white cross. Now I don't really particularly care for this and I was thinking uh, since the red is like martyr, mort martyrism that my regular basic line soldiers I'm going to probably do in red armor with white crosses. My jacks and sergeants which will be you know the main guys of the, of the units. I think I'm going to do in black with white, like picture here, and then the, the stereotypical white with red cross, which is you know, obviously the complete opposite of this. I'm going to save for my um, war casters, and, and that's the way I'm going to go with Menoth. But Menoth is a little bit on on the back burner. Let me put this camera back. In place. Just give me just a second. And then we can see everything. No. Okay. 
But before I can get to my mammoth, I still gotta finish my heavy gears, which I'm hoping to get done before the 15th, which I highly doubt. Sorry, Tay. But here's the orange that I used. Um, Reaper's Master Series paint. Uh, I found that these do separate, and they separate fairly quick, but a couple good shakes, and these are, these things are doing good. Uh, the paint, um, it comes up very nicely, and these are very, these are much easier for me to get locally than um, getting my Vallejo paints. So I think I might actually just start swapping, slowly but surely switching over to um, Reaper paints. So, you know, maybe some comments that of what you guys have have had in the past with the Reapers if you've used them. You know, always oh, nice to you know get some information. I like I've said before, I really don't mind shaking. I used to use testers in the 90s, and I always shook those little glass pots to uh, get the pigments. And then you know I used to take a toothpick in there and I'd stir them up after even after shaking. Because uh, I found that was really helpful. So, there's that. Um, but, my next big project that I need to do is commission. And my friend is paying me to do these. Or is his Meneth Battle Box. Uh, this is my friend that has the trolls. And, I'm trying out painting over white primer. So these these are one hundred percent primed white from Army Painter primer, which was kind of expensive, but I couldn't find a good metal paint primer anywhere locally. So you just had to do so I'm going to do these guys next after I'm done with my heavy gear and my friend knows that he's not worried about it. he's still playing trolls so this for him is just something when I'm done I'm done and then he pays me so I, I have some time to get uh, started on this project this will be the next thing I knock out because I don't want to hold on to his miniatures for too long I want to get it done and then I have a second alternative why, or not alternative, but reason why I want to get my painting practice in on these on these guys. And that is, if you've been following some of my videos, it's because I got Infinity, I got the Combined Army, And I decided I wanted my combined army. Oh, Domino! I wanted my combined army to be a brighter, bright army. Uh, I, I guess that would be the correct way to say it. A, a brighter, uh, colored army. I wanted the colors more vibrant than priming black. And I decided to try something other than the Zenithal lighting. To see how it how it works, um, how much different it is, to see which one I like uh, better. That's yeah, that's all the miniatures uh, right there. I, I'd move them more this way, but they'd fall over because of the paper. Like I said, I was I wish I had bought that cloth at uh, Wally World instead of buying it big giant sheet of construction paper from Michaels, but eh, such is life. We make mistakes, then we learn from them, and then we kick ourselves in the ass. I'll get the cloth sooner or later, I just, I gotta go to, I'll probably get it tomorrow, because I gotta go to Walmart and buy a new brake light for my car, uh, my back light is out. So, these are all pine white. So once I'm done with my friend's Menoth, not Menoth, K-Door, I hope I have the same Minoth for those miniatures the whole entire time. Um, I have a good understanding of how painting pure white prime miniatures works, and that will give me a really good advantage in coming into this project and painting. So I, I have had somebody ask on Warmonger's 
social website, Warmonger Game Day, about these miniatures and how small and intricate the details are. And the only thing I could say was they're probably just as detailed and intricate as, especially this guy here, as you're probably your Dark Eldar or Eldar miniature. Uh, these guys here may be a little bit more bulkier, so it may be a little bit easier, but these, these, these miniatures have really good sculpts on them, and uh, so I'll show a little bit of this off in this video. I know I'm making this video a little bit long. I apologize now. I probably should break this up and, and do a completely separate video of these miniatures complete. Now, if you remember in one of my videos, um, I wasn't too sure, but I found out, oops, I can point at it all I want, but you're not going to be able to see. If you look up on the back of the leg here, not the one closest to you, but further back, they have these little shoots that come out. Well, this one in the back was actually separate, and I had to, I had to clean that off and then put that in. And then these little posts on the back were on the little screws to the side, which I knew, I saw, and I, figured, I knew I had to clean that. But that was that piece was back here. Let's see. I can't really get a good view of his face that way. So I'll go back into my settings real quick, and then go to zoom. Zoom a little bit more. And hopefully, I know I didn't wash this, so it's. Now it can be super great to see the details on this miniature since it's one solid color. But I hope you'll be able to see enough of it that you can get a good idea of how well these are. These are actually detailed. These are superb sculpts. They're really nice. And I put milliput into where the joints were on these uh, just because I didn't like just holding it in with super glue. And let me put this guy up to the side real quick because I have no room at my desk for him. And the next guy we'll put up here. If I can figure it out. Now I used um, an alternate head than the one that's on the box that's previewed. Uh, he had something coming off on the side of his head. And I couldn't tell if it was facial hair or if it was tentacles or, or what it was. So I kind of just grinded it flat so it looks like some type of maybe um, machinery or cyborg chunk or, or something you know, onto the side of his face. And that's how I'm going to paint it up because I just cannot tell what in the world it was. Now this arm here with the sword drove me crazy kept popping off with the slightest amount of pressure uh, I scored it I, even, I eventually had to just uh, I just eventually had to just suck it up and pin the arm in place it just would not stay with just regular old super glue no matter how hard I tried and these little pieces here on the back if you remember, I had that little sprue piece, and I thought, well, maybe it's just the sprue from the model, and they left it in the package. No. It was these little knobs on the back, these three things right here on the back with these indentations. There was so much flashing around it, I really couldn't tell at first that that's what these were. I cleaned it up, and then I put these on backwards, and then I had to pull them off, and then clean it all up so I could re glue them. And Man, I'll tell you what, these things were a bear, even with a pair of tweezers, to get in place, to get down and on the model, and to stay in place. But, it looks good, so I guess that's what it counts in the end. And then this arm, just glue, no, 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 you know, just some super glue, no scoring. Just glued it right in place, and boom, no trouble. The head, same thing, some glue, boom, no trouble. Crazy. But there's there's that miniature. I really like this head better than the other one. I kept the other head. Um, I, I might. Well, I might. Uh, I hope that um, I find another 
another um, custom reason to, to use the head maybe on a base or a conversion so I'm gonna hold on to it it's a really nice looking head so here's this guy that was another one of the multiple quarters um, he's a little bit higher than the regular Morats, I believe was the names. I'd have to look again. Really nice details on him. Pretty cool looking sword. Um, I, and there's his back. Now he comes with, with um, a gun like the other guys. But there's no rear I could see to put it on him. So I think I might throw it on his base. Or I might leave it for, if, you know, if I get one of the big tags. Uh, maybe I'll put it down on the ground for one of the big tags. So for right now it's just kind of a scrap piece, and I'm not sure if I want to add it to the to his base. Like he set it down, you know, and he pulled out, you know, both of his swords here, and he's coming after somebody. Um, there was some cleaning right here. I had to do a lot of uh, there's a lot of extra metal right here, and it took me a little bit to make sure that I had that right. And come on, camera designed to focus correctly. Get my hand in focus. Thank you. But yeah, these these miniatures have superb sculpt. The hair is really nicely done. And so I'm very happy with this purchase. Very happy with the work um, they're doing with the Infinity Line at um. Oh, what is it? Corp. Corpus Belly, yeah, I believe it's Corpus Belly is, is the company's name. These are truly very highly detailed and beautiful miniatures. Uh, if I never played a game of this uh, after I paint them, I'd still be happy just to, to own these miniatures. They are really nice looking miniatures, and they have some really beautiful miniatures in their Infinity line. Uh, if you like something a little bit more anime, I would definitely say the um, the, the Japanese, the Yinju, Yin, uh, I think it's Gen Yu or something like that, it means Jade Empire. Um, but they have a, a Japanese sectorial army and they have tags and it screams anime. Pan, uh, Pan Pacific has a tag that they recently released not too long ago, I think it's called the Dragon, and that thing is friggin amazing it's got this really cool looking uh, belt fed ammo thing going into the gun that kind of like circles around them and it looks amazing if you haven't seen it go to their website and check these check check the miniatures out I mean if you're not wargaming you're just painting you might find something that you might really like and it might be a have to have type item for you and one last miniature and then I'll, I'll cut to the chase and, and, and let you guys go. Here's the last of the guys. Give you a quick spin around because once you've seen one of these guys, right? You've seen all of them. It's just their poses are slightly different, which, like I said, I really like that. That's not the same static pose for every miniature. There's at least some type of variant. So, I thank everybody for watching. Once again, if you know some place I can get decals or stencils that will fit uh, our the miniatures of that we for, that we're using, please um, please let me know. Um, if for some reason you can't put the link in the description box, just send me a private message uh, through YouTube and and you know with, with the link so I can easily get to it and find it and look at the stuff it'd be super appreciated by myself um, if it's got any merit or to it I'll, I'll make a video um, and I'll give you credit I'll give you a shout out for it as well um, to try to not only to help inform other people of you know places that they can go to get decals for their armies you know not everybody plays the static space marine army you know they have vanilla a vanilla army of their own creation their own color code so you know they might be out there looking to find something you know they might not be happy with their freehand like I wasn't happy with mine and they're just waiting to get 
uh, a company that they can find with some decals on it that are really good that they can pick up and throw on their miniatures. Well, I'm signing off everybody. Time for bed.